So you're on the road to fire, financial independence, retire early, whatever you want to call it. I think it's a great goal to have, and I believe that you can achieve financial freedom sooner than you think. But for most of us, it will take many years to get there. Even if you're on the fast track and you're saving 50% of your income, you've still got a 16 year journey ahead of you. That's shorter than most people ever dream of, but the journey can still feel long and even lonely. So how do you stay motivated along the way? The motivation part is important to figure out because when you first realize that it's possible to reach financial independence before traditional retirement age, it's incredibly exciting. You want to get your retirement accounts all fired up, maybe even open up some new accounts. You want to slash your expenses, use a bike as transportation, and find all kinds of ways to be efficient with your money. And you want to tell everyone who will listen about FIRE. You are ridiculously motivated at this stage. And at the end of the journey, there's this vision of financial freedom, unicorns and rainbows, as you get to control your own time and do what makes you happy and fulfilled. But what about this part in between? Maybe one, two, or three years after learning about FIRE, the honeymoon period winds down. You've gone frugal where you can, you've optimized your spending and investments, but then there's not much new or exciting. It's just a matter of sticking with the same plan for another 13 years or so. This is where it's so easy to lose focus and motivation. I know because I've been there. I started my fire journey about 10 years ago, and right now the end is in sight, and I'm so glad that I chose that path when I did. But it wasn't always easy, and it wasn't always exciting. I definitely lost motivation at times along the way. Sometimes I got bored with the whole idea, and sometimes I set aside my frugal ways temporarily. I found myself needing to revisit some of my favorite blog posts, podcasts, and books about fire just to rekindle the flame. During market downturns, it was especially hard to stay motivated when I saw the wealth that I'd managed to build just evaporate in market downturns. I would feel that way even though I know that these events are normal and that in the long term, the market goes up. But as someone who checks and updates his investments and net worth regularly, well, it's always been a hard pill to swallow to see those numbers go down. It all worked out though because looking back, I can see that by staying mostly on the frugal path and by automating my investments over the years, I've had results that just would not have been possible otherwise. I've also learned some strategies along the way to help stay motivated on this journey to fire. And those strategies are exactly what I want to share with you. The first strategy is to recognize that when it comes to financial freedom, there are levels of increasing freedom. It's not an all or nothing situation. As you increase your savings rate and accumulate wealth, there are perks along the way. First of all, there's eliminating bad debt, like credit card debt, auto loan debt, student loan debt. This is a great first step that lifts a financial weight from your shoulders. And really, you can't even think about investing, building wealth, or reaching fire when you're drowning in debt. So it's essential to eliminate this debt, and that alone absolutely gives you a new level of financial freedom. From there, you continue to ramp up your savings rate, save and invest the surplus, and you see your wealth start to build. Very quickly, you're no longer living paycheck to paycheck. You've got some breathing room. That feels good too, and that's another level of financial freedom. Then maybe you've got a few months of expenses saved up. So if you have an emergency expense or if you've lost your job, you've got that financial buffer to pay for that expense or to find a new job without immediate disaster. That is absolutely another level of financial freedom. Then you'll get more financial buffer to the point where you've got enough of a buffer that you could go without your job for an extended period if needed. Let's say you've got a whole year of expenses saved and invested. This level of financial freedom is known as FU money. And the idea is not that you go around actually saying FU to anyone. That's actually pretty rude. The idea is that you can change jobs, change careers, change your whole lifestyle if needed without the immediate concern about money. FU money means that you can walk away from a bad situation and walk into a better situation. You're no longer a prisoner of your own financial life. And that's a very important level of financial freedom. From there, maybe you reach the level of barista fire, where you have enough that a part-time job or a side gig would supply enough income combined with your investment income to support your lifestyle. 
Barista fire. Yes, it's a thing. And if you're interested, you can learn more about it and other types of fire as well in this video here. And here at the top of the mountain is fire. Financial independence, financial freedom, or what I would call early retirement, because at this point, whatever it is you're doing, whether it's working a job, lounging by the pool, or making YouTube videos, you're doing it completely by choice and not because of a financial need. This is the ultimate prize of living below your means for many years. The second strategy is to celebrate milestones. For example, what if you take things a step further and not just recognize levels of financial freedom, but actually celebrate when you reach them? Celebrate when you get out of debt. Celebrate when you've got three months of expenses or a year of expenses saved. Celebrate when you reach barista fire. Whatever the level of financial freedom that's next on your journey, celebrate when you get there. It doesn't have to be a full-blown party, but just something that happens in real life outside of your brain. Do a quick toast with your partner, order the guac at Chipotle, even though it costs extra, any special way to formally acknowledge the milestone. Other milestones that you can celebrate along the way are specific numerical goals. I would encourage anyone on the journey to FIRE to track their investments and net worth regularly. It's motivating to see those numbers increase over time. And like I mentioned before, those numbers will sometimes go down, often through no fault of your own. And if the market takes a dip, your net worth will take a hit. That's just how it goes. But when you do reach new big round numbers, like when your savings rate reaches 50%, or your liquid net worth reaches 10,000 or 100,000 or $1 million, when you reach these sorts of numbers, it's time to have a little celebration. Because if you don't take a little time to celebrate these numerical goals, they'll just pass by and they will seem very anticlimactic. After all, even if you reach millionaire status, is your life any different than it was the day before? Unless you did it by winning the lottery? No, it's not different at all. It's just a new big round number on your screen. But it is a huge accomplishment that is worth celebrating, and I think that celebrating these milestones will help you stay motivated. The third strategy, and I think this is especially important, is to build your post-retirement life now. Don't wait until reaching fire to build the life that you want. What do you want your life to look like after fire? Can you start making your life look more like that now? If you want to take on a hobby or a side hustle in early retirement, could you start that process now? Even if you start small here and there when you have some free time, start building that up. By actually trying it now, you also prove the concept to yourself. Or not. Is this something you really want to be doing with your time? It's better to find out now than find out once you reach early retirement that you don't have anything that you want to do. And who knows, if you start a money-making hobby or side hustle, it might work out better and faster than you imagine, and it could propel you to fire even sooner. And what about health? It doesn't make any sense to wait until you reach early retirement to start focusing on your health. You have to start now. Get an exercise routine going, improve your nutrition, do all that stuff so that you can go into early retirement as healthy and vibrant as possible, and so that you can get maximum fulfillment out of that time that you have in early retirement. The thing is, fire will not magically make you happy and fulfilled. It's just numbers on a screen. But your life is not just numbers on a screen, so don't wait until you reach fire to improve your life. If you want to kick ass in early retirement, you don't have to wait. You can start kicking ass now and you'll enjoy those benefits now and you'll be even more motivated to continue your journey to fire. The next strategy is if you have a significant other, a partner in your life, get them on board with fire, at least to some degree. Yes, it helps to have a partner on this journey to fire. It's not as much fun to go it alone. You'll enjoy the journey more if your partner is there with you. If you're both excited instead of just you being excited, then you're gonna get there so much faster, so much more efficiently because you're working together. It's like you're both rowing the boat of your financial life together. If you're rowing out of sync or if you're trying to turn the boat in a different direction than your partner, you'll get nowhere fast. If you wanna make progress and stay motivated, it's best to work together. But I know that it can be a challenge to get a partner on board with FIRE. So how do you do it? Well, I would start by having a conversation about what they want out of life. 
What motivates them? What kind of life do they want to have with you? If you haven't had a big talk like that with your partner or if it's been a while, maybe carve out some time and talk things out. Do they value time with family or friends, kids? Do they want to change careers? Once you know what they want out of life, you can more easily explain why you think that a journey toward fire will help meet those goals and how it can help achieve their vision too. You can adjust the fire message to meet their goals in life and then maybe they'll get just as excited as you are. And at that point, you're both off to the races. And it will be so much easier to stay motivated on the journey to fire if you're in it together with your partner. So the journey to fire can feel long, even if you have a high savings rate. But hopefully these ideas will help you stay motivated along the way. And hopefully this video will help you with the math of reaching financial independence and retiring early. It's just a simple math problem. Life, on the other hand, is not so simple. And that's what makes achieving financial independence and retiring early a little tricky in practice. 